Professional Staff Network podcast. The podcast professionals with Christy and Ash, made by professional staff for all Swinburne staff. Hi, I'm Christy Horn, and as always, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land we are recording. For me, it's the Boonarong people of the Kulin Nation, and for Ash, who's recording on Boonarong, Boonarong country, and we pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. Well, it's great to be back for another episode and I feel like we have a bunch of items to chat about and we have the most excellent VIP guest to join us. But before we do that, let me introduce my partner in pod to the mic, the one and only, the amazing human being and the best boss ever, Ash Carden. Thank you. Well, that is a very impressive introduction, but um, really weird to hear. Uh, so I hope so. I have a brilliant team, I will say. So, and so excited to realise that we're now both on Boonarong country. I, when you moved, I didn't realise that we're both um, on the same land. So that's really fun. That's um, pretty cool, isn't it? I think so. Interestingly, we still have not organised a visit, but that is mostly because, as with everyone, we're very busy and that whole COVID thing happened. However, it is good to see you. It is fantastic to be back and it feels like a very, very long time since we recorded last, not just because of the break but because it legitimately feels like several months. It sure does, doesn't it? And it hasn't actually been that long um, but, in fact, um, so much has happened um, in between. So why don't we just recap on some of uh, the amazing highlights, Ash, take it away. Like our um, definitely (laughs) book of world record winning, I'm sure, maybe not officially, and let's not get sued for copyright, with our record-breaking over 1,000 listens to a podcast. I Um, know. We're we're revolutionary. And either that or we're going to get a lot of comments from that comment. Um, So it is not just mum listening in, your mum, and if your mum is listening in to this one, I believe I've got about three ums on the um counter. (laughs) Yeah, you know she's listening in. G'day, Mum. And um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, It is actually official uh, Swinburne Guinness Book of World Records, so take that, everyone, and whatever. It's just a fact. Is that the Swinness Book of World Records? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Easter break, Anzac Day, long weekend. I took the extra three days and made um, a really long break. But you know what? The killer is coming back to like a bazillion emails and so much work. Right. So um, before Easter, we had a team lunch with the sports research group. Plus, David from LTU made approximately 1,000 cheese and tomato toast sandwich in the kitchen. So it was <laughs> it was pretty funny. He was having a team lunch for Easter before they broke. And, um, yeah, fair to say there was a fair few left over that got chucked in the freezer. <laughs> That's fantastic. Maybe he needs the best boss ever title. I don't think I've ever made toasties for my staff. Maybe that's a should be a, a mark down on my YPD. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, he was doing a great job, but um, yeah, there were plenty of leftovers. Um, but I feel like it's been crazy with lots of events and stacks of action happening all over Swinburne. How about you, Ash? Yes, uh, the bazillion emails and the I like that we're keeping our multiple channels of communication with emails, team, Zoom and hybrid. I love the inclusivity and the accessibility for myself as like even just in my own job being able to juggle things more. But, of course, what we found post-COVID as soon as we can juggle things more, we're trying to juggle things more. So that's the next sort of step to maybe reduce some of the bazillion emails Um mm. That's a, however, um, the energy of coming back a bit to campus and the hybrid stuff, and that's really, really quite enjoyable. And there's a few movements around, and I think staff from Luton Lane are coming onto campus and so excited to do some of that office sharing stuff. Yeah which is fun. That is not actually what you asked, but these are things that I think are quite exciting, so I decided They are. That's totally fine. Um, And I'm really looking forward to seeing the Luton Luton Lane staff come um, over as well. And your role with the AGC team. I know. You have a new 
role or doing your brilliant, engaging, impactful yeah. So, um, industry areas. I know it's been amazing. So Lauren Mararu, who's gone off on mat leave, um, they've asked me to step in to help do some of their internal external communications and helping out with some events with um, the amazing Irene. Um, so there was that's been keeping me <clears throat> extra busy. And you know, there was one word we said we were never going to talk about. It's come up. Yes, mail merge. So I've been, I've been uh, doing some mail merge and refreshing, dusting off some old uh, um, skills there. So, yeah, that's it's been a, a bit of a crack up. But uh, I have been working with Irene on a couple of um, events with the AGSC. Oh, my God, I can hear my emails pinging. Sorry, I thought I turned it off. It's not pinging through the pod. Oh, I good. mean, however, does, sorry, mum, did another um, um, does speak to the volume of emails that fly around. It's insane. Um, also, Ash, we have reignited the SPSN um, calendar of events and you know where you can find it? You can find it on the wiki. So Nicola Howard, who's our dear leader, she um, has got that all up on the wiki and there's got lots of lunch and learns and it's a really great way to get involved with the SPSN um, network. It's Friday. I come with sound effects on a Friday. <laughs> so do I. And it's the sausage roll that keeps repeating. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to put myself on mute every now and then. Sorry, everyone. Heartburn. I'm going to go into a refresh of our recap of our last episode. Yep. With the divine Vicky Peters from the Mundani Tumbadul Centre. Christy, you had a wander around the centre. I did. I just, um, the door was open, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go and have a sniff around. Walked upstairs, there were people working. <laughs> Just walking around there. It's like, hi, and kept walking. But it's really nice in there and I can't wait till they have their big opening because I'm going. And, Christy, you went to the presentation at the Auntie Dot Indigenous Grasslands. It, How I, was yeah, that seems like ages ago, but, yeah, I did. And it was um, just after we spoke with Vicky, there was a um, presentation on the Indigenous Grasslands and um, and the, the curator or the grassologist. I think that's probably not his proper title, but he was there and he did a fantastic um, presentation and showed us all about the different grass that's growing in there and how well it's doing. Um, so it was really interesting. I took some photos and um, I think I posted them somewhere, but if not, I'll, I'll, I'll hunt them out and um, share them with you. Um, so that, that was really interesting. Oh my God, Vicky, if she's listening to this, is going to hate my guts for not <laughs> announcing the, um, the gentleman correctly. But I'm going to say, if there's any horticulturalists that listen to our podcast, can you guys just, anyone, if you have prefer grassologist, which I think is a fantastic title, but that's <laughs> because I know nothing about horticulture and um, or, or if your specialty is certain grasses probably. You know. yeah. So, but did you know the amazing wall mural on Burwood Road is of Vicky's cousin who's a Yarra Yarra Yorta Yorta man, Dr Andrew Peters? And this is the first in the series that Swinburne's commissioned by um, Melbourne artist Matt Adnate. It's pretty cool. I took a walk around there the other day and it is beautiful. It's so big, Ash. It's just fantastic. So if you haven't seen it, guys, um, get out and have a look around because it's going to be great. And I'm really excited to see what else Swinburne comes up with. So we have almost locked in all our VIP guests for 2022. We can announce some of them. We have the Brilliant Professor Karen Chalmers, whom we may be recording a uh, podcast, maybe an after work drink podcast, so an after five type podcast, which we are both super excited about. Yep, I'm looking forward to that one. I think that's a great idea. And the well known, I can't remember if he is Professor. Yep. So, Alan Huffy, uh, he is one of Swinburne's incredibly well-known astrophysicists and we're super excited to talk to him as well as what we are still seeking is one of our wonderful students to feature on the podcast. We previously last year had one of our amazing five-time 
Olympic gold medal. Yeah. Lifetime Olympian and gold medal winning. Yep. yep. Uh, alumni. And so now we're looking for a current student. Olympian is not a requirement. <laughs> Would, <laughs> preferable. Yeah. yeah. Please <laughs> come with medals. <laughs> Some sort of medals, you know, but, yeah. but we might accept a, um, an Auskick medal also, which to be clear, I'm neither an Olympian nor do I have an Auskick medal. So, you know. <laughs> Well, um, that sounds pretty awesome and I'm really excited to be looking um, to be speaking to uh, our upcoming guests. And all right, Ash, enough jibber-jabber from us. Let's crack on with our next guest for 2022. Welcome, Walter Robles. Thank you so much for coming to our podcast today. Walter is a diversity and inclusion professional here at Swinburne. And prior to coming to Swinburne, Walter worked in the corporate sector, mainly in training and development and teaching, which was his first love. And Walter is also one of our SPSN committee members. Hi, Walter. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for bringing the feathers. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks for the very kind introduction, Ash, and thank you very much, Christy, for having me. Very yeah. excited. You're welcome. Walter, let's get to know you a little bit better, and um, we know you have a very important role here at Swinburne, so can you please tell us a little bit about your role and what you do, and how long have you been at Swinburne? Ah, well, I started at Swinburne in June 2017, um, and my role as diversity consultant really uh, involves looking into existing policies, procedures, or anything that may uh, be considered barriers for some of our employees. Um, And these employees are those who identify under the different areas uh, that we work with. For example, for employees who identify as members of the LGBTIQ plus uh, community or uh, our employees with a disability. Um, And of course, in these different areas, uh, people the different needs. Uh, for example, uh, so some of the activities that we organize around the LGBTIQ inclusion space would be our annual pride marches. Um, uh, it'd be like rainbow lanyards and our ally network. Um, Walter, you've, you've discussed part of your role and what that involves. Can you tell us a little bit more about your expert field? I started... Um, looking after labor laws and uh, legislation around the world that protect people in precarious employment. Um, And so these are people who have temporary contracts, are not necessarily covered by national legislation, essentially people who usually identify um, as uh, uh, one of those identities that are protected by Australian um, equal employment and opportunity laws. Uh, And so we try to make sure that all of these uh, barriers to their success are eliminated um, or at least minimized. Um, And that looks very different in the areas that we operate in. For example, when we're talking about making our employees with a disability uh, have access to reasonable adjustments in the workplace um, and also making sure that people from diverse uh, linguistic backgrounds uh, would have some kind of uh, opportunity to catch up with other people from similar backgrounds um, and to promote a, a sort of cross-cultural exchange. Um, so yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very conscious that my role doesn't sound very convincing at all and I might lose my (laughs) it sounds like I just do everything that's put on my desk which is essentially what happens um not that I mind because it's actually quite enjoyable uh the number of people that I meet through this this work is just amazing to to people not in the space I can assure you it sounds not only very very interesting but also the next thought is um Am I doing enough in this space? What else can I be doing or should I be doing for, you know, the teams and the schools and our colleagues and things like that? So it it does not sound um, simple or uninteresting. It sounds quite the opposite and very crucial. Yes. I mean, from the outside, I'd like to think that people see um, a lot of the rainbow uh, colors and uh, think that some of the, the things that we do are really just celebrating these things. But also there's a lot of things that happen in the background. Um, 
that are quite sad. You know, my work is because there are uh, inequalities that exist that have to be corrected um, and to make sure that our fellow employees at Swinburne will will have um, as best opportunity as possible uh, and not hampered by the fact that they have problems in uh, areas of their lives. That really potentially don't need to affect what they do. That's the thing that we're trying to achieve, and I'm very glad to work at Swinburne that does, it's an organisation that knows you need to actually fund and put work <laughs> into what inclusion looks like because it doesn't mean anyone's going to do less than. However, if you haven't necessarily experienced what someone's experiencing, you may accidentally prevent them. I think that's for us a really big challenge about if those if these conversations and celebrations and information isn't happening and it shouldn't be for one person to have to make the whole world see their journey because these are all sort of human things, yes. right? Or yes. And this is how we walk the earth type thing or, in fact, wheel the earth or, or however we get around and they don't. there's things that don't need to be barriers that are accidental barriers that you can't just touch all of them as a yourself. We've got to- Absolutely. And you know what? This is one of those, it takes a village kind of moment. Mm. It, it can't, uh, the change can't happen from one person. Although we've seen very inspirational people across the university um, champion a lot of the causes that we support. Um, it is really the entire university doing its bit um, and making sure that we welcome people from diverse backgrounds. We want a university that represents the community uh, level Australia, uh, which is diverse, which is multicultural and full of like really spicy food. <laughs> uh, um, for people um, listening to our podcast, we uh, get to see Walter talking now and his face has just lit up. He's talking about his, you know, his expert field and you're so passionate and um, it's a great big smile from ear to ear. So it's so lovely to be listening to an expert in this field. Thank you. Hey, Walter, um, I know your team is currently lo- located over at Luton Lane, but you're moving to this side. Hey? Yes, hey. very excited. When's that happening? And um, are we going to have coffee more often? Uh, definitely. Coffee. Next coffee is on me. Uh, okay. Def- and uh, that's happening next week. In fact, when we go in next week, uh, we've been instructed to start packing. Fantastic. And for, for a few days following that, uh, we are going to be working from home. And I think uh, the, the house elves of, of Swinburne will set up all the computers and all the, the necessary bits and pieces for us to be able to move into SPS uh, on the second floor. Nice. It's going to be it's, great. Uh, I love SPS. The meeting rooms there are much nicer. Uh, And it's really uh, about time for people at Luton Lane to feel like we work for university um, and be surrounded by university students. Excellent. Hey, um, I also noticed you were on one of my favourite TV shows, Hard Quiz. Uh, how much fun was that? And your topic was oh. Friends, <laughs> um, yes. my, which my 11-year-old niece is just discovering this show. Um, so that was pretty funny. I watched it. I love Friends. Look, I was on the show twice. That, that was how bad I was. The first time I was really competitive. The second time I wasn't. Both times, all well, spoiler alert, I didn't win. Um, no brass mug here, but I am surprised at how many people love the show. I thought it was a show that really captured the spirit of the 90s when everyone's just like friends and drinking coffee and hanging out. And that's what my, me and my friends uh, did at the time. It's nice to see younger generations appreciating that kind of humor. It's not just all Pixar and animated films. <laughs> hasn't dated either. It's on um, it's on high rotation on free to air, but it, it hasn't dated at all. Well, the clothes are. Um, I look at those clothes like, yep, that's from the 90s. <laughs> uh, and the, the burgundy lipstick. <laughs> you know the what? Velvet, the velvet jackets and oh, love I it. I think maybe I've dated because, honestly, the bur- burgundy lipstick and anything velvet, two of my favourite, favourite things. Yes. Also, I'm pretty sure I still have burgundy lipstick somewhere. So I have several different shades of burgundy lipstick. 
I don't I need, sell that we need to revive burgundy lipstick, I think. Um, yeah. If if it's just to use up what we have, <laughs> and then we can go out of fashion again. A little birdie told me that you are also looking to start your own Swinburne podcast. So we had this uh, discussion about how we are able to engage more of our staff and students in terms of familiarizing them with the language that we use in the LGBTIQ inclusion space. So when we had our last ally meeting, um, I introduced this idea of a podcast to the group where we interview people who identify um, as, for example, in our first episode, we're featuring T for trans in the LGBTIQ plus community. And we're going to talk about what happens within the trans community in terms of what we know, um, Australian Bureau of Statistics data and what's reported uh, on the federal and state levels. Uh, we'll see at what's happening uh, internationally um, and also learn about the words that will inform us and, and allow us to engage in a discussion uh, when we're talking about trans individual and trans students. Unfortunately, we still have some people who do not understand what personal pronouns are. Um, and these are the kind of things that we'd like to be able to cover in the podcast. It's going to be informative, hopefully funny, and uh, lighter than, than the mood is because what we know is that people who identify within the LGBTQ spectrum are, are more prone to self-harm, they're more prone to uh, homelessness, and there's a lot of sad things that we can look into. Um, our podcast is going to be called Outrage because there's plenty of reason for us to be outraged by what is still being allowed to happen in 2022. Mm. Um, a lot of people look at Australia and think, well, we are quite ahead. There's marriage equality and we can walk around uh, holding hands with our same sex partners. It doesn't end there, though. There are still a lot of things that need fixing. And we're just trying to get everyone on board because we think that being able to engage in a debate and know the terms and the issues uh, would allow us to kind of progress and move forward. We can't just be talking about religious discrimination in schools. Um, that's the wrong side of history. And uh, we know that already, but we want to upskill everyone unintentionally. If they listen to the podcast, hopefully they'll learn something or at least have a giggle on their way to work or driving back home. I love it. I reckon it's an absolute no brainer. It's a winner, winner, winner. And I'm excited to watch your journey on the podcast. I hope um, so. <laughs> so um, Walter, reignite is a theme for the SPSN podcast and we think it's an awesome theme. Um, yeah. What do you think? I think it's amazing. Look, um, I had been, um, well, I, I've on leave for the last two years and really haven't uh, thought about uh, work. And this reignite theme really encapsulates what 2022 is for me. I'm back and I really would like to reignite my passion to work for a very long time. I've really enjoyed sitting around doing not much. Mm -hmm. And so um, light up the fire in my belly and uh, <laughs> get things done because I miss this. I miss the action. I miss being able to contribute and see people like you and be inspired by the kind of work that happens around Swinburne. So very excited for you too. Um, it looks like you've got an amazing lineup and I'm not just saying that because I'm the first. Second. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we started that first second business. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> screw it up all the time. Well, um, thank you so much, Walter, for taking the time to chat with us today. We really appreciate you being here and what you're doing at Swinburne. You have such an important role and um, we're behind you 1,000 million billion percent. And good luck with your podcast. I cannot wait to listen in. I cannot wait to work out how it's done. And so thank That's you for having me, Christy and Ash. Really having having this opportunity to experience this podcast uh, will greatly help in how we do ours because uh, you you guys are the only podcasters I personally know. I mean, there's millions out there, but you're the ones I personally know and actually like. So, oh yes, I want to be lifted amongst your podcast episodes. Oh, you will be so exciting.
Well, Ash, we totally lit the match to reignite this podcast and I'm feeling really happy, not only because it's Friday, but this was such a highlight of, this is such a highlight of my job and I really love that I get to share it with you and the Swinburne broader community. So let's keep up with the tradition. Please give us a score out of 10. We are 13 out of 10 today. <laughs> so the ratings last year were, were primarily 11 out of 10 because you've got to back yourself. Yep. Walter, it's been amazing to have you as a guest and learning about what you do and what you're going to do is really exciting. And, and on theme with reigniting, not intentionally, but it's just exciting and it reminds us why Swinburne is such a good organisation to work for because they know the value of investing in these things. And then the additional point for the feathers, which yep. is unmistakably maybe could have gone for more points, but a 13 out of 10 to keep it humble. <laughs> yeah, very good. Okay. Thanks everyone for listening. Until next time. See you later. Bye from me. Bye. Bye.